Welcome back everybody. Today is Electric Tuesday, the second ever Electric Tuesday I think it is. Um, and you cannot help but have noticed that the weekend that has just gone by, particularly in the world of motorsport, was dominated by electric cars. Um, of course we had the final ever on the streets of Brooklyn in New York City, the final ever race with the Generation 1 Formula E car. That's the first time that's worked. I've done this 10 times now. Every time it drove off the end of the desk. <laughs> the Generation 1 Formula E car. Um, last time we'll see them, of course, because in next season's Formula E Championship, we go to the Generation 2 car. I'm sure you've all seen it by now. Uh, this is what it looks like. A pretty futuristic looking car. I think you'll agree. I can't wait to see all 22 of them as it will be next season on track together. But this thing was a car that has got Formula E onto the map. I think it'll go down as an iconic racing car, this one. The first ever fully electric single-seater racing car and what a success it has been. It was put together, of course, at relatively short notice and all you know, we had 20 of them turn up on the streets of Beijing in September, I think it was, of 2014. I was there at the very first Formula E race watching these things roll round on their formation lap to the start of the race, uh, to the grid. Nobody knew at that point whether they were going to get off the line, were we going to get you know, a spectacle of a race, were we going to get a complete failure or a complete disaster. Genuinely, nobody knew. Even Alejandro Agag who I remember being stood very close to at the side of the racetrack as the cars formed up on the grid, had his fingers crossed because genuinely no one knew it was going to happen. As it's turned out, though, they have been an incredible success and have paved the way for what comes in the future. The Generation 2 car, striking looking cars, I said. So this, I think, will be a very, very special car in the history of racing cars when we look back on it in the future. As well as Formula E, of course, this weekend, it was the Goodwood Festival of Speed and... I went down there on the Friday, uh, which was a brilliant, brilliant day out. I was there as a, as a fan. Um, so just watching, just having a look around, just talking to people. Really, really great event as it always is. But I said at the start of this video, it was dominated by electric cars. And I think that's fair to say. Um, there were two cars that I want to particularly pick out and have a little look at today. Uh, one of them is a, a car that you may or may not have seen yet. Uh, this is a unique vehicle, and in fact, I've got another model. Of course, I've got another model. Robo Race. That thing there, I hope you can see that. Uh, that is the Robo Car from Robo Race, which is unique not only because of the way it looks, it's obviously a striking looking vehicle, um, but it's unique because it's fully autonomous. You may notice there is no driver or no space for a driver in that model. And that's what's brilliant about it. So it's electric, fully electric, uh, but it's autonomous. And they are flying the flag for autonomous uh, vehicles, autonomous technology, but also putting it into a motorsport environment, which makes it exciting, it makes it fun, it makes it fast. Um, so the Robocar did the first ever fully autonomous run up the hill in Goodwood. And I was there with the guys, I know the guys, I've worked with them in the past, They've been attending Formula E events for the last couple of years and I have done a lot of work with them at the track to help promote uh, this series or this project. Uh, and they were very nervous about this run. This is not a, a radio controlled car. It's not something that's being controlled by the guys trackside. This is fully autonomous using AI, artificial intelligence, to find its own way up the track and through the obstacles and, and round. And particularly think about the Goodwood hill climb it's got it's got brick walls stone walls it's got trees over the top uh, which which block any gps signals so it has to rely on things like lidar things like the cameras as well as other tools like gps and all sorts of other sensors that it has around the car to find its own way up the hill and to the checkered flag and it did it pretty quickly as well it's quite an impressive sight when you see it happening um, so this is one of the things that has come out of the whole Formula E project um, because they've partnered with Formula E, they have a slot on the Formula E calendar, uh, sorry, race schedule to demo 
uh, this kind of technology. And uh, and it's a real, a massive result for them to have achieved what they achieved this weekend, to get the car up the hill all by itself with the challenges that Goodwood poses. This is an incredibly quick car. This would do very close to 200 miles an hour. Uh, it's fully electric, huge battery down the middle. It's quite heavy, but it's obviously very, very low. There's no need for things like rollover hoops because there is no driver. Um, so aerodynamically, it can be very efficient. So this is a, a car that has incredible performance when it's allowed to be uh, to let, be let loose. Um, they're finding their feet at the moment. They're starting to develop it. They start to go quicker and quicker. Uh, they've had two of them on track, or the DevBots, which is the, the preview of the previous car predecessor to this one, where they were developing the technology. They've had two of the DevBot cars on circuit racing each other, uh, avoiding each other, of course. Um, and they've had incidents in the past. One crashed when I was at the uh, Formula E race in Argentina. Um, but that's all part of the development process. And in the end, of course, what will be great about these things is they won't crash because they will be able to talk to each other. Um, the, the technology on here, the computer chips, the deep learning chips, the AI chips, are able to do something like 20 trillion computations per second in order to make sure that it, it navigates its way through paths and over, over obstacles and around obstacles and avoiding other road users as well. So in the end, this will probably be the safest way to travel in an autonomous vehicle. Uh, so well done to Rover Race. Congratulations for quite an achievement this weekend. And thanks for the little car that gave to my, uh, my little lad at the weekend. Uh, right, the other one, talking of autonomous vehicles and electric vehicles that was really, really impressive, and I've been a huge fan of since I first saw it, is the Neo EP9. It looks like this. Also a hugely impressive car. Uh, this thing has one megawatt of power. That is mind blowing stuff. That equates to something like 1,300 brake horsepower, something in that ballpark. Incredible levels of performance, this car. Uh, it's a, a, they've made a few of them, so it's called a, it is called a prototype, but it also classifies as a limited production car by the Chinese company Neo, who of course, if you don't know, have a Formula E team, the Neo Formula E team. Um, so this is also technology that has been derived directly from the Formula E paddock, which is a great sign of what Formula E is doing in the wider automotive world. Um, the Neo EP9 has been a showcase for Neo, which is this new Chinese company that's now moving on to develop uh, a much more um, achievable, if you like, saloon car, uh, the ES8, which will go into production, I think, uh, later this year, uh, first of all in China. Um, but the EP9 has Motors in each wheel has full torque vectoring, so it can divert that huge amount of power between each wheel as and when it needs it in terms of uh, uh, track, uh, improving traction. Incredible aerodynamics, twice the amount of downforce that a modern Formula One car has, because it's not restricted by the regulations that F1 cars are. So it has, for example, a diffuser underneath the car that runs the entire length of the underside of the car, generating huge amounts of downforce. It has active suspension, again, something that's banned in Formula One terms, but it's really, really clever, just like we had in, in active F1 cars back in the day, that keeps the car at a stable aerodynamic platform, so it keeps it level, again, maximizing the downforce that it can generate. Adjustable uh, rear wing, adjustable front splitter. This thing is pretty incredible, the technology that's packed into it. And it should be, because it costs around $1.2 million to create each car. Uh, I think there are six of them in existence right now. Um, but mind-blowing in terms of the experience that you can have. Uh, Peter Dumbreck drove the car at Goodwood up the hill at the weekend. It set uh, the fastest run up the hill for a, an electric production car. They were going, actually, for the all-out uh, electric record up the hill, but were pipped by the VW Pikes Peak IDR car, which is also a mind-blowing bit of technology. Um, uh, we'll have a quick look at that. That looks like this. That, of course, is an out-and-out -out racer designed for the Pikes Peak Challenge, which it won by a mile as well, but came here and blew the record out the water for the fastest electric run up the hill. But the EP9 takes the, takes the fastest electric production car. 
but it also holds lots of records for other circuits. It holds the fastest ever lap of the Norschleife, the old Nürburgring. Uh, I think it has the fastest autonomous lap around Kota, Circuit of the Americas. Um, so it's going around the world at the moment, breaking records left, right and centre. And that is a real sign of where we're at with electric technology. Uh, and I know that people will say, uh, yes, we don't have means of supplying enough sustainably produced electricity to power a, a huge take up of electric vehicles at this point. That's a fair cop at the moment. That's a fair point. But it's also a huge area of development and investment as well. So it is only a matter of time before that does change and we are able to produce huge amounts of sustainable energy that can power an electric automotive world. Um, but for now, there are signs that the experience of driving an electric car is already far superior to the experience in many ways of driving anything else right now. And I know that there are other elements to this. There's the noise that you get. There's the smells that you get from a, a gas guzzling V8 or V10 engine. I get that. I love those things as well. But in terms of pure performance, electric cars are taking over the world.